All right, so last in our realm of contradiction style proofs is a proof by counterexample. Uh, so a counterexample, or sometimes a counterclaim, our book will use, but I don't see that too frequently, is just some sort of suitable example that shows that something doesn't work out, um, shows that the statement isn't valid, which is great, but the pitfall that I see with a lot of my students is this one, and that's using a counterexample in a contradiction. That's kind of a double negative. You cannot set up a proof by contradiction and then prove the contradiction with the counterexample. And that's just a double negative. So I can't say if my proof is, I don't know, show that the sum of two odd numbers is even. And I can't say, so I can't say assume for contradiction, assume for contradiction, that the sum is odd. And then I can't say, but three plus five is eight. No. No. Because then all this example does, all this example does is just demonstrate the validity of my original statement. And that's not a proof. That's just an example. Right? So it's kind of a double negative. So no, don't ever do that. If you're going to do a contradiction, you have to go through the contradiction. If you're going to do a counterexample, you have to stick with the given statement. So stick with the given statement. For example, show by counterexample, and this is actually a typo here, so please make a note of this. Um, that's not where the typo is. This is the typo. Show by counterexample that the given statement here is not true. And the statement is uh, n is an integer, and n squared is divisible by 4. Therefore, n is also divisible by 4. And your first gut instinct is like, well, of course it is. Like, if n is 4... 4 squared is 16, and 16 is divisible by 4. But this isn't always true. This is one example that does work, but it's not universally true. So let's find a counterexample. Let's see what perfect squares are divisible by 4. Right? So my perfect squares are 1, 4, 9. We'll just list out a whole bunch. 16, 25, 36, 49, 64. Let's stop there. Let's see which n's are divisible by 4 also. So my n's that produced these squares were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay. So out of my, and I'm kind of just trying to think through this, and this might be one way you choose to think through this, is to pick it apart statement by statement. So I'm looking at the first part of the statement, say n squared needs to be divisible by 4. Okay. So... Given that n squared is divisible by 4, which would be, let's see, not this one, not this one, not this one, not that one. Here are all my n squareds divisible by 4. Well, let's show an example now of an n squared that's divisible by 4, but whose n, whose like original number, is not divisible by 4, because that would be my counterexample. My counterexample would be to show n not divisible by 4. Well, I actually got to have a couple options, huh? I've got 2. So here's a valid one. n equals 2 is a valid counterexample because 2 squared is 4, which is divisible by 4. But 2 is not divisible by 4. And the other valid counterexample here on the screen would be 36. Would be, so n equals 6. Because 36 is divisible by 4, but 6 is not. Right, we can't use 4. 4 and 8 show, that, like, show the statement to be true. But it's not universally true because I can come up with examples that are not true, that are not valid. Um, or that disprove the statement. So, and that's what we're doing with the counterexample is when we're saying that something is true, when we're saying something is true, we're saying it's true for all cases. So we have shown that it is not true for all cases. It's only true for like every other case. And 
And that would be a counterexample. We're looking for just one example of something that disproves the statement. And as long as you have to show that it's valid, that this is a valid counterexample. So just like I did here, right? show me that this doesn't work out. And then you're good. And then we're good. That's my counterexample. And I've disproved the statement.